What's up, loungers? This is Post Production Pi with srlounge.com. Now, in this tutorial, we're going to go through an ordinary to extraordinary post production edit using this image. And you guys might actually re remember this image because last week on Facebook, we actually posted this image and did a little how to on actually how it was shot. In this tutorial, we're going to show you guys how it is produced. Now, just in case you guys didn't see the post on Facebook, let's talk about it for a second. Let's talk about how it was shot. We had basically three minutes to get this shot. So what we did was we took these chairs, we put them into position really quickly right in front of this fireplace so we had a nice symmetrical look to the shot. We shot this on a Canon 5D Mark II at 1 200th of a second, F2, ISO 800, and on a 24 millimeter 1.4 lens at 2.0, of course. Now, some asked, uh, someone asked on Facebook, why didn't we shoot this at 1 100 ISO 400? I don't know, because I was being lazy, I was trying to get it done quick, and I knew that ISO 800 would work just fine as well. On a, on a 5D Mark II, ISO 800 is nothing. So I knew there wouldn't be a lot of noise anyway. So that's why, but you could have done it at 1 100 second at ISO 400 as well. Now, let's remove our information by hitting I, and let's talk about how this was created. So with this shot, what I wanted, what I envisioned for it, is basically to put the couple in front of the fireplace and have this nice glow coming off the fireplace and kind of creating this rim light around them. Now, because the fireplace wasn't bright enough to create that, we have some you know, ambient room light and everything like that. We didn't have the right look, and so what we did was I took my two assistants. I have one standing right behind this chair on the left, one standing behind this chair on the right, and each have a little light gun. It's just a tungsten, uh, an orange balanced uh, or tungsten balanced light gun that basically just shines. It's like essentially a flashlight. And I have the right person shining the light on the bride and the left person shining the light on the groom. That's what's giving us our nice little rim light right here. So now the overall vision for what I want to do with this shot, I want to create a really moody, dramatic, just overall really romantic shot with this image. So I want it to be like kind of dark and moody. So let's get to producing it now. We're going to produce it with the Lightroom 4 preset system, but don't worry guys, we're going to show you right afterwards the actual settings and everything like that. So preset system users can benefit by learning how to use it, the preset system better, and the rest of you can benefit as well from just seeing how we produce this image. All right, so let's get started. We're going to always start, of course, with our standard import, which applies all of our basic settings to the image and sharpening everything like that. Let's go into our base adjustments. We're going to brighten it by one stop. I'm going to go down to base tones. We're going to do a medium HDR. This is going to pull out the tones out of the shadows and everything like that. Um, just kind of increase overall dynamic range. We're going to do a light boost of detail just to give us a little bit extra mid-tone detail there. A medium boost of contrast. We're going to do a medium brighten to blacks, which is actually going to darken it because blacks are currently set higher than they are in this preset. So medium brighten is actually going to do a little darkening. Next, I'm going to do a light amount of noise reduction. Notice if I zoom in, we still have a tiny bit of grain. And if you guys have watched my past videos, I like a little bit of grain. I like that film grain look. And if we actually keep it at zero, we probably have an okay look to begin with. It's a little bit grainy, but it's fine. Film grain, that nice soft look with the grain, I'm not worried about. What I am worried about is grain that looks unnatural and kind of just unpleasant. All right, so I always do a little bit of noise reduction, but I don't blast it over, like just basically increase noise reduction so it looks like our skin tones and everything like that, our, our people are made of glass. All right, so now we're going to add a little bit of vignetting with this. Let's go with a medium vignette, and that's great right there. That's our basic settings, and let's show you guys exactly what we've done. So over at basic, what we've done is we've adjusted exposure up by one stop. We took contrast up. Why? Because what we're doing down here with the highlight shadows, whites, and blacks is we're increasing dynamic range by flip-flopping. We're pulling down our highlights and whites, and we're pulling up our shadows and blacks doing so decreases contrast and so we're adding contrast back with the contrast slider. Next we're adding clarity for the mid-tone uh, contrast and just boosting overall detail. We're adding a bit of vibrance just to make it pop. Let's go down to, let's see, I think the next setting that we have is our detail. We have a standard amount of sharpening dialed in. If you guys have watched past videos, you know this is the exact same setting we use every time for most of our images unless they need a specific amount dialed in. But 71.5, 10, and 20 is a great setting just to, for general sharpening. Noise reduction is set to 20 just to reduce a little bit of the unpleasant side of the noise and leave a little bit of the fine grain. And then for lens corrections, we have dialed in a vignette. And we typically are not vignetting our images. We're only doing it in this because it works very well with a vignette. It has kind of, you know, all the light is kind of centered right in this center area of the image. It works well with kind of that dark and moody image. And it doesn't look necessarily like we're vignetting. It just looks like the light is falling off. 
All right, so that's enough talk. That is all the basic settings. Let's go back up here to our temperature and let's do some finishing touches, including some brushing. So what we're going to do here is I want to actually bring my tint up, and I would have done this normally when I did the uh, the other adjustments, but I'm saving it for now. All right, so what we're doing is we're adding some magenta into this because I want that warm tone to have less green and kind of more red, so it's more kind of on the orange side, like a, a glow of fire. So I'm just going to go more red, and then we're going to dial up the temperature to kind of compensate to get a nice kind of orange-red glow in the background. Right about, let's see, I think 4,000, 3,900, right about that range is pretty good. Okay, so what we're going to do from here is we're going to start doing some brushes, uh, or painting a little bit. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to select a brush, and then... If you guys want to dial in these settings, if you don't have the Lightroom 4 preset system, because these are all the brush presets from the preset system, if you don't have them, after we select the brush, just pause it for a second, dial in your settings, we're not going to hide it, dial in your settings, and then uh, you're good to go. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to start with a clothing and texture detail enhancer. This is specifically designed for clothing and texture. What I'm going to do is kill the saturation, because we have a lot of yellow already in our dress, and I don't want to amplify the yellow, basically. Okay, at least not too much. We're going to get a little bit of amplification and we're going to modify that in a second after we paint it in. So what I want to do is basically just make all the clothing details because she has this gorgeous, I think I said gorgeous like a New Yorker. Gorgeous, I don't know. <laughs> she has this gorgeous dress right here but, and we want to make that detail just really jump out of it. But at the same time we don't want to yellow it up. So I'm just going to paint it in and then like we always do, after we paint it in we uh, we just kind of make some adjustments as far as the mask goes to kind of clean it up. Once again, I'm going to paint it on him as well. And there's my iPhone going off. Let's see, it was painted over his shirt. It's up to you guys whether you want to paint it over his pants. It's going to darken up his pants because it is adding contrast to it, um, which is going to cause a little bit more clipping. I'm not too worried about it because our image is kind of dark and romantic anyway. So if it clips in some really dark shadows, I don't really care to be honest. <laughs> All right, I'm holding Alt now, and we're going to minus this out of the skin right here. So let's clean up the mask. Let's actually hit O so we can see our mask too. We're going to clean this all off the skin. We don't want to do detail enhancing over skin areas. I think you guys know exactly why. It's not flattering. Even though this is uh, kind of produced to be more of like an editorial look, we still want the bride to be happy with the way she looks in the shot. I'm going to take it off this chair right here. And that's great. I have it taken off his hand. I'm just going to smooth it in a little bit and pull it off the background. And we're always keeping the feather on uh, basically at 100% on this so that we kind of have a nice, very subtle graduation between the effect, where the effect starts and where it stops. All right, that's great right there. Let's uh, hit O again so we don't see our adjustments. Now I'm going to adjust my shadows a bit. I'm going to pull them up. So I don't want to darken it that much. I'm also going to brighten up just a tiny bit. I don't want it to stand out to the point where it looks like it's jumping out at me from the image. Like if we go up to like 0.5, it looks like it doesn't belong. We want it to be still kind of dark, but just a little bit brighter. Okay. If you want to adjust temperature on that, you're welcome to, to say cool it off a little bit. But I like it a little bit on the warm side, and I'm okay with that. All right, now from here, I'm going to do some dodging and burning. Now we're going to go over some tricks that basically pros use a lot of times to bring out really kind of the dimension, like kind of make an image more, I guess, what is the word, dimensional? I don't know, to make it look like it pops more. So what we're doing is we're going to basically deepen the shadows over the shadows and brighten the highlights over the hi highlight areas. Okay, now this works particularly well. I'm going to silence my phone. This works really well, especially when you're dealing with architecture, because there's so many areas where the shadows are falling and where there's highlights and everything like that, and you can really amplify it and make an image super dramatic. So let's start. I'm going to go and grab a burning brush. Whoops, I accidentally uh, changed my current brush to a burning brush. Let's hit new and then hit burning brush. All right. Okay, so what we're going to do is first I'm going to darken up the edges of the frame because you know what? I really don't want attention being drawn to, say, like the chair, um, kind of the the flooring on the left side and it works really well because again our light is kind of all centered in the middle of the image anyway so we're just kind of bringing attention off these outside areas you can actually see a little bit of that light gun light coming and hitting the ground casting a shadow off his chair leg and we'll kind of fix that in a second if this were going to be used in like say an editorial or if it were going in an album I'd fix this and there's one other thing I'd fix too guys 
we have a little bit of back fat. Now this this model is actually gorgeous. She's not a model, she's a bride, but she looks like a model. She's super skinny, but just the fact that she's wearing a strapless dress, um, when she leans forward, it hugs the chest area really tight. And so when you lean forward like that, it's automatically gonna create the appearance of back fat, even though she's incredibly skinny. So this is something that we need to fix in Photoshop. All right, I'm gonna do the same thing on the top of this. Check this out, we're gonna bring this over the mantle. Why? Because I wanna kind of create this sense that the light is falling off above the mantle, that we're kind of getting this uh, you know, glow to this fireplace, even though that, that this is actually ambient room light. It's not being caused by my lighting or anything, it's just the ambient light in the room. All right, we're gonna hit new. I'm gonna create another brush. This time we're gonna make it a little bit more powerful. We're going down to 1.7, I'm just gonna darken up some of the areas that I really don't want a lot of detail showing up at. So this is gonna be, once again, the kind of edges of a frame. On this side, I don't want really much attention brought over to kind of that chair detail over there. And I wanna really bring it into the center of the image more. All right, let's hit new again. I'm gonna do another brush, and this is gonna be our brush where we're gonna do a little bit of amplifying in the natural shadows in the image. So I'm gonna take this right underneath the, uh, what is that, a mantle? Take it right underneath the mantle, and I'm gonna paint it off their heads in one second. I'm just gonna get the rough shape in right now. And now we're gonna adjust. So we're following the natural highlights and shadows in the room. We're just amplifying the shadows a bit. And you'll see how this kind of adds and creates a really dramatic effect. Be really careful with that, um, with the brush. Make sure that when you're painting it off, you don't create a halo. That's the last thing we wanna do is create a halo around the couple because it'll be really noticeable. Now, check this out. With the chair right here, I'm gonna create and just kind of deepen the shadow right here. Just add another little bit of brush setting. We're gonna hold Alt to kind of paint it out. And I'm just gonna paint it out a tiny bit just to kind of soften up that effect right there. That's great. We're going to do the same thing on this side. We're going to paint it in and then I'm going to kind of modify, soften it up a little bit with the edges. That looks great. We're going to pull it off this side of the chair because we don't want to basically be darkening the highlight areas. We want to follow these natural kind of shadows in the shot. Okay, so we're just doing this all over the shot and you can see how much added dimension this is really bringing out in our image. We're just basically amplifying everything and kind of improving on the overall dramaticness. We're making up new words too. We're improving on the English language as we make up new words. All right, I'm gonna darken this area up a little bit so we're kind of just making it a little less noticeable, these lines right here underneath the chair. All right, now you can go to town on this. You can try it out, play with it yourselves, but for this shot, I'm happy where it's at right now. And let's check this out. Let's uh, remove all of our brushes by hitting K and let's check out our before and after on this extraordinary edit. I called my own edit extraordinary. Is that okay with you guys? Here's the before guys and here is the after. We've done a lot. We've made it look really great, super dramatic. And you can see how we took pretty much a very average shot and made it much, much better with just a bit of post-production finesse. All right, so hopefully you all enjoyed that and we'll see you all with the next tutorial.